All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Green Bay Packers in today's video, Victory Monday, and this one feels very good, very, very good. CJ Stroud, clear-cut MVP candidate, even though he's only in his sophomore campaign, quickly emerging as one of the league's better quarterbacks. Folks, CJ Stroud yesterday afternoon in Lambeau, 10 of 21 for 86 passing yards. The Green Bay Packers defense just held C.J. Stroud to 86 passing yards. Jeff Halfley has completely changed this defense in literally six or seven weeks. One and a half months of being a brand new rookie coordinator. We dealt with Joe Barry for way too long. This is what it's like. To have a good, competent, capable defense. Also, I have to shout out our kicker, Brandon McManus, because uh, I forgot to, for some weird reason, in our video yesterday. Unbelievable story. We'll talk about that towards the end of the video. A wild stat here from Matt Schneidman on Twitter. The Packers sent five or more pass rushers on only 17.2% of C.J. Stroud's dropbacks. The lowest team blitz percent in the NFL is 17.1, just 0.1 tick below it. The Packers pressured C.J. Stroud on nearly 52% of his dropbacks. The highest team pressure percent in the NFL right now is 42.6. So a beautiful scheme. The guys came to play. They won their one-on-ones. I mean, Xavier McKinney and Evan Williams on 62 combined coverage snaps versus Houston. Two targets, zero catches allowed. Stephon Diggs versus Jair Alexander yesterday. A whopping zero catches for zero yards. This team is even better than we thought, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, we're talking about my Green Bay Packers in today's video. But before we do, hit that like button for me. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. Could try and get this video to 500 likes, folks. That would mean the absolute world to me. So, you know, we had Joe Burry, Joe, Joe Barry, and we shifted the scheme, right? And we started to see something very interesting. Takeaways, turnovers. Evan Williams, Xavier McKinney, Javon Bullard, Keyshawn Nixon, Jair Alexander, you name it. The secondary's been playing a lights out. Absolutely lights out. But one player who was, you know, not really acclimating or adjusting, and it was taking a long time, and he's getting paid a, bun a boatload of money. People were freaking out. People were worried about it. We talked about it on the show last week. Rashawn Gary. Rashawn Gary in weeks one to five had six total pressures. And when you look at how much money he's getting, and when you've seen, you know, specifically what Rashawn Gary did last year, emerging as a star, um, it was weird. Rashawn Gary in the last two weeks has nine total pressures. He balled his freaking ass off yesterday. Balled his ass off. Another player who balled his ass off is Mr. Romeo Dobbs, who's got the best hands on the team. It's not even close. That game suspension was such a weird thing going on and Romeo in the last two weeks Romeo 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 he's been amazing eight catches 94 yards six first downs yesterday he caught four or five contested catch opportunities 2.97 yards per route run 23 yard catch on the first play of the day and two catches on the final drive welcome back Romeo Dobbs emerging as some of the best hands in the National Football League, let alone, let alone on Green Bay's roster. Another player who stepped up big time yesterday when Quay Walker went down with his injury, Eric Wilson. Here's what Eric Wilson did yesterday for Green Bay. Tackle for loss on second down that helped force field goal try. Back on third and five forced the punt. Pass breakup on third and five forces punt. Sack on third and nine forces punt. Special teams tackle covering punt. Tackle for loss on second and eight helps force punt. This team is loaded top to bottom defensively. The Packers as a team currently have a top 10 scoring offense at seventh. They have a top 10 scoring defense at 10th, a top 10 offense by yards per play at fifth, and a top 10 defense by yards per play at sixth. We're five and two. And you can give me the whole rhetoric of, oh, Jordan Love's thrown a lot of interceptions. He threw two in Houston. Could have easily been three. He's leading the NFL in picks, and he missed two total football games. Jordan Love went trailing yesterday against Houston. We we touched on this yesterday. 19-25, to 25, 173 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, a pass rate of 133.8. The dude's... 
on track for like 45 touchdowns and 24 interceptions or something like that we as we get into specifically more like divisional play and once we get into hopefully playoff talk um yeah we need to minimize risk a little bit but at the end of the day jordan love was compared as like this hybrid athlete you know from what we saw of him last year this hybrid quarterback of aaron Rodgers and brett Favre, and he's it's all brett Favre. and keep in mind brett Favre won how many i'm counting here one two three yep three mvps and he also won a super bowl so jordan loves extremely young i'm not freaking out about interceptions especially against D'Amico ryan's and that houston texans defense in a game like that you're literally just simply trying to win it no matter what you got to do now i got to talk about brandon mcmanus real quick because and Dan Whelan saved that unbelievable play. I speak for every Packers fan here. I remember so vividly, and I think this was a really long time ago. I think I was still in high school and this happened. Mason Crosby played the Detroit Lions, and I think he missed like four field goals, five field goals. He had like the worst kicking day of all time. And, you know, he ended up going for a couple more years. But obviously when we lost Mason Crosby, the Packers kicking unit has been horrid. And... We had Anders Carlson last year, and I think there's a very real argument you could make that if Anders Carlson, you know, was a better kicker, uh, the Packers could have been in that conference championship game, but neither here nor there. Our kicker, Braden Narvison, it wasn't working out, and they caught him last week, and they signed Brandon McManus, and he made all three of his extra points. Anders Carlson was picked up uh, for San Francisco, and he also missed an extra point, so McMahon is already three of three on extra points, but he had yet to take a field goal attempt. And so, yeah, if you guys watched it or if you didn't watch it, time is down. And we have a 45 yard field goal attempt for his first ever field goal attempt for the Green Bay Packers. And he drills it. He nails it. He gets that Lambo leap in here. Welcome, official. Brandon McManus, you will never have to buy a beer in uh, Lambeau, Green Bay, whole, the whole state of Wisconsin for that matter. But I feel so much better about this special teams unit in general this year compared to last year. I know there was that botched uh, return, but that seemed more like a communication. That just was like a stupid dumb play. So that's that kind of stuff's got to get cleaned up. But the point still is the Green Bay Packers just held C.J. Stroud to less than 100 yards. Jordan Love threw three touchdown passes. Josh Jacobs, stud as always. And just the vibes are high, man. This team is loving it. Everybody's enjoying each other. It's just so fun to watch as a Packers fan. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button for daily NFL content. We post a ton of Packers videos on this channel if you guys are new here. Folks, give me your... We'll narrow it down. Give me your player of the game from yesterday. We'll see you in a couple of days. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you soon. Peace.